Time now for sports on 104.7 The Cave. Here's Ned Reynolds. Mike, the intern, Ned Reynolds, back in the studio on a rainy Tuesday morning. So we have a new captain of the Ryder Cup team headed to play, and this time it ain't Tiger. Everybody thought it would be Tiger Woods, and he was asked would he be interested in captaining the Ryder Cup team. The Ryder Cup is next year, 2025, and it's in the United States. But he politely said no, he has other duties to take care of, and that's just for now. He probably will be somewhere along the line. So the new captain is Keegan Bradley, who is a veteran of the PGA Tour and twice a Ryder Cup player. He'll do well. Bradley has high respect from all the other golfers, and he'll be a very good controller and captain of the Ryder Cup team, whomever might be included when they play. It's next year. It's September of 2025, and... They are playing this year at Bethpage Black, and that's out on New York's Long Island, and that'll be next September. Not this coming, but next September. But Keegan Bradley will be the new Ryder Cup coach. Congratulations to him, and it sucks Tiger can't go along, but uh, I kind of understand where his head's at at the same time. Can't, can't continue that ride forever. What happened in uh, Team USA's basketball scrimmage yesterday? How'd they look? <laughs> the USA men's team it was they played the select team. The select team are mostly borderline pros and one college kid, and uh, they were about to be a college kid, and he was nothing short of outstanding, a 17-year-older named Cooper Flagg. Anyway, the Olympic team won 74-73. to 73. Now, this was a scrimmage, and in scrimmage, you don't keep accurate counts of scoring and the totals because that's not really included. It's getting your game together, but still, 74-73 is about where the score was. And the top prep player from the nation is a kid from Montverde who's headed for Duke, and his name is Cooper Flagg. He's 17 years old, he's 6'9", and boy, did he ever make a name for himself. He scored probably around 17 points. Again, the, the totals aren't accurate because it is a scrimmage, but the fact of the matter remains he was nothing short of outstanding and gave the Olympic team an eye-opener. Well, the U.S. Olympic team plays a game, and this won't well, be a scrimmage, I guess, but it's a practice game tomorrow night against Canada, and they play in Las Vegas, and the Canadian team is very, very good. Seven, it's 11, I pick them up. 11 NBA players on the team. Uh, it'll be a nice little challenge for our team, but we'll see what happens. The Olympics coming up in just a couple of weeks. Go Team USA! Last but not least, the USA has two men's players in the Wimbledon quarterfinals. Who are these guys? They are indeed Taylor Fritz and Tommy Paul. Fritz upset Alexander Zverev, who was really kind of penciled in as the opponent coming up for uh, Novak Djokovic. But no, that won't be the case because Taylor Fritz beat him. Taylor Fritz is an outstanding American tennis player and a very good one. Tommy Paul, who's kind of flown under the radar from the southern New Jersey, also a very fine player. He faces Carlos Alcaraz a little bit later on today in London. That will be a very tough match. Djokovic very much in the quarterfinals as well. Wimbledon coming down to the championship level, which will be this weekend. Who does Ned like in the men? Djokovic. Yeah, and the women. The women, I, I tell you what, it's, it's such an interesting matchup, but I like the, uh, the young lady uh, from the University of Texas, Lulu's son. She is not an American. She represents New Zealand, but she's all American. Texas. She played her tennis there. She is a very good and strong player. So we'll see what happens. The Cardinals, they still hot right now? They are indeed. What we'll beat the Washington Nationals 6 nothing yesterday. You kind of saw this coming, too, because Miles Michaelis was doing the pitching for the Cardinals, and he's, he's an old pro. Michaelis is in his mid-30s and mixes his pitches very well and against a very young team, and the Washington Nationals are extremely young. You knew a crafty pitcher like that would probably have some pretty good success, and he did. Michaelis went the better part of seven innings, shut out the team, the relief corps finished it up, and the Cardinals provided the offense with Alex Burleson and Paul Goldschmidt having home runs. And hey, against the Washington Nationals, a team the Cardinals had to get well against. Take three out of four from them. Washington is a fair team. They're very young and in the coming years are going to be really pretty doggone good because they have some outstanding talent. But right now it's a team you have to beat and the Cardinals did so and very much, very much in the hunt in a weak division, but they have to keep on winning. 
Speaking of the Cardinals, it looks like the Kansas City Royals are going to be facing off with those guys in the I-70 series this week. They play tonight. As a matter of fact, that's weather permitting. And I looked at the (laughs) map here a while ago, and it looks like that system may still be up in St. Louis by game time. Maybe not. Maybe it'll put the Jets on and get out of there quickly. But it's the Royals and the Cardinals tonight, the first of the four-game series. Two of them now, and the other two in Kansas City will be later on in August. It's kind of an odd series, but that's the way it is, Royals and Cardinals. And tonight, a former Cardinal is going to be pitching for Kansas City, Michael Walker, a guy who made, get this, Mike, this doesn't happen very often. But about, oh, I'm going to guess about 9, 10, 11 years ago, whenever it was, he made his professional debut here in town in Double A. He was one month out of Texas A&M, and he pitched here in town with the Springfield Cardinals. He was that well thought of, and here he is still around. Anyway, Michael Walker will pitch for the Royals, Andre Palante for the Cardinals tonight, and the Springfield Cardinals will be back in action. I'm sure this system will be out of here by game time tonight. Play the Wichita Wind Surge, and hey, the Springbirds playing pretty well now in the second half of the season. Get on out there and watch them play. They're a good team. We're to pretty much the halfway point of the baseball season with the All-Star break coming up, and you know it's kind of nice to take a look at who's on top of the mountain in the AL, it's got to be Baltimore and New York, right? It is Philadelphia and Baltimore. Philadelphia Phillies are rated number one right now, and they are they have the best record in baseball. Now, whether or not the National League is as strong as the American League, that remains to be seen. But the New York Yankees are third. Now, the Yankees have, have kind of stumbled a little bit here, but that's going to happen. All these teams, the best ones included, go through peaks and valleys. Well, the good teams have many more peaks than they do valleys, but all teams have slumps, and the Yankees are in win, uh, one right now. The Phillies are not. Phillies are rated number one. Baltimore is number two. Wait a minute. How about our How about our Missouri teams? Well, get this. There are 30 Major League Baseball teams. Kansas City is number 10, and they are rated above the Cardinals. Kansas City is 10th. The Cardinals, surprisingly, having just a, a really kind of so-so year, are rated 13th. That's about mid midway through the, the level. Uh, since there are 30 teams, they are 13th. But nonetheless, still there and still all of them in playoff contention at the moment. And it's nice that came out right before those two teams play each other because that's really how it's decided in <laughs> sports. Ned, you have a great day. Stay dry and I'll see you manana.